Welcome back to modeling this impromptu weapon, this Guttigan. And if you got this far, then well done. Uh, keep on going. Uh, hopefully we can make something really nice from this tutorial. And so this section is about the floor grip. And um, what we've done so far, we've modeled the, the main grip. We've modeled the bolt carrier um, um, and the what seems to look like the stock and now we're going to go on to the full grip here so let's jump right into it so let's go into our orthographic view and let's start creating some cylinders if you don't know where the cylinders are if you're pretty new to blender um then it's just an add mesh and then um cylinder i just have that um mapped to my quick favorites um and you can map um things like this to your quick favorites by going to uh, whatever it is that you want and let's say it's a you do 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 do. let's find something useful for me um a taurus and then you'd add and to quick favorites so now when you i have it that's a shift tab we will find it uh there taurus i'm just gonna scale it uh, i mean rotate that 90 degrees scale it down and then translate it over here go into x-ray view shift x for me we just want to approximate the the view, uh, the the size of it, because it's not a true side reference. There is some perspective to it, so we just have to do some guessing, and that's okay. I mean, if we were to go solely off this reference, it'd look like we'd have to taper the mesh down when in reality it's because of the perspective it creates this curved uh we see the cu the curve in the in the barrel in the in the the pipe fitting so we want to keep that straight so we want to approximate the the end point really of where that would be somewhere in the middle let's say and just select all those verts and then bring them back and we want to just go a little bit in where this um this fitting would be here um so we're just gonna because we've messed with the transforms if you remember if we yes the rotation is at 90 degrees and it's all 0 0.066 uh, so we're just gonna all transforms and origin to geometry and that's all nice and fresh so when we the reason for this is when we do bevels for example Let's go back to this just to show you an example. If we were to do bevels, uh, in this instance it looks okay, but it would be off in reality. Um, so when we um, do that, it would be a perfect bevel every time. Not that we want to bevel it right now, but I've come across some issues with it when I've messed with the scaling. So what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate the cylinder. And there's, there's multiple ways in which we can do this. We can rely on booleans or we could sub model it. And because my particular way of doing things is the quicker way, um, uh, I know how to do it the sub-D way, but it takes a lot longer. But you can get the same results through booleans um so we're going to do it that way because this is my workflow that i use for work and it seems to work okay for me and i get some good results so just approximate the length of it and we want to bring these edges in to about there just so it meets in the middle just like in the reference and another reason why we're going to um, 
and do and the booleans in zbrush again is namely because we have this section here as well that needs to be part of the mesh and have some good geometry there and also with the booleans here um, so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to have to do some sculpting as well because if you notice here there's some raised bits where they've been merged together um, when producing a factory so we're going to do just that we're going to do some sculpting on this part as well so we're just going to um, from this select them both shift tab and then we're just going to go to shape i've made that to go to my quick favorites too if it's in the hops menu if you're under um, operations to shape and we're just going to keep it as the box and click it's just a real nice way to get um, some shapes uh, upon a selection rather than if we were to do a cube it goes it's massive and it's off in it, uh, at the origin of the um, of the scene which we don't really want it's just a few more clicks that we rather not do This is quite high up, actually. And what we're going to actually do, we're going to use box cutter for this as well. Um, just making sure that this is, that's what we're going to do, select this one, because I just want it in the center. So I'm just going to do the same thing to shape. And scale it down a little bit. Bring it high up. Now it's quite, there's a bit of an edge to it. And it looks to be just below the curve. I'm going to bring that in. That's, we're just going to make it unique so it's different on one side so I'm going to Alt X and then I'm going to mirror this side over to that side and then activate box cutter by Alt W I'm going to hold the con control key to bring up the grid to let, allow me to gr uh, draw in the grid and I'm just going to go over to the left hand side scroll down a bit so it increases the resolution and then just click so now we can mod scroll go come back here and then we can just edit it to be more like the reference so we notice it lines up with um, the edge here the corner and I think that looks okay. This maybe needs to bring be brought up a little bit, and these brought out a bit more. Made a bit wider. And we're just going to sharpen and bevel. It's got quite a, a thick bevel on it. I'm just going to sharpen these as well. And it comes down, we can smooth that out in ZBrush. So it's not so much of an issue. <laughs> That's looking good. So now we need to make, I'm just going to make some Boolean meshes real quick for this section here. I'm just going to save it and an incremental save. First, 
what we need to do is, I mean, we have no reference for what's on this other side here. Let's see if we've got any more references of what. So we can see there's quite a thick inset. I actually straight. Okay. That's helpful. Don't need to go all the way because it's not necessary. If you're in a game, you wouldn't see that at all. I'm just going to, in fact, I'm going to bevel it. Increase the segments with the scroll wheel. Don't need to do this side here because in the reference, if you remember, we have this giant um, nut or whatever it is um, there. I'm just going to do the same for here, in fact. In fact, before we do that, I'm just going to go, go back because I want to get the inset to be the same. So I'm just going to select them both. And this is what I like about Blender. You can edit two separate objects at the same time. And then I'm not going to control E because that would be a bit weird. And in fact, let's try it and see what happens. Yeah, see. So what I am going to do, make sure I've not done anything dodgy there. I'm going to extrude along uh, faces along normals. And that extrudes properly. Okay. And again, we don't need to go all the way up. Uh, for this one, or all the way back for that one. I'm just going to go a little bit further for this one. And then, uh, bevel seven, uh, six degrees, I mean, point zero zero six. And that's the same. Perfect. Save that again. Just going to hide that cutter. I'm thinking I could probably reuse this mesh. I'm going to go in the side view again, scale it up approximately the same. And what we're going to do here, because if we made that circle, I'm going to scale that up and extrude that out once and again another time. It's quite a large inset here. Just going to insert it again. So we must remember this tape here as well. That's almost filled it in. Oops. And we're just going to extrude inwards. And extrude again. And then insert. Just giving some support loops there. In fact, 
and remove this shift F and then bevel that down to two and then another support loop there and what I want to do here scale this down so it fits the pipe oh. just going to match the other side by taking these verts and then bring it in. Looking good. Now that looks like to be a smaller version of this. It's pretty similar, so we're just going to reuse it and then alter it. I select all these because it looks to be straight and they align on the x-axis and again for these but it looks to be a lot thinner And with this one, we're going to have to do something a little bit different. We're going to delete the faces here because we're going to Bridge edge loops there. Whoops, be careful not to delete the wrong edge loops. I'm just going to delete all these edge loops because I want to get it. Um, if I just isolate this. Trying to align it properly. Insert edge loop and then bevel. I'm 
I need to sort these mesh loops here out. And then we're just going to to shape again until we get to a cylinder and then change the orientation. Scale it down so it fits inside. Oops, and then scale that bus. We need to insert this again. <laughs> Otherwise, this, the bullet won't be able to go through. And then bridge the edge loops. I'm just going to shut off the bevel. There we go. So we're going to do the same thing again, we're going to, to shape, get on the right axis, bring this down, scale it all the way down so it approximates. And now you notice that it's not completely straight, it looks like it goes in at a little bit of an angle, which is a nice little detail. So we're just going to scale it up. And we can uh, change the rotation in ZBrush. Just gonna all transforms as well as that as well. And then we're gonna reuse this nut here. Now the detail here is different, it's flat at the bottom. So we're just going to change that real quick. Scale it up first. Set with those edges and align on the Z. And again, it's a little bit thinner. Save it and then incremental save just to be sure. It's already looking quite nice.
So making sure that's central. So now we need to create some Boolean meshes for and uh, these these threads here. And it's uh, I'm going to rinse and repeat the same same old method as before. Just to be sure, we're going to um, make sure we don't do anything silly like exporting with the normals the wrong way around. So we're going to recalculate outside. And they are the right way around now. They're not inverted. Okay, so now we've got this, um, these Boolean meshes sorted, uh, we can start thinking about the next stage of the modeling process, which is taking this into ZBrush. So we're just going to grab these, just going to add them to the Boolean meshes just to organize things a little bit better. And you know what, we're going to do the same thing as we did with the stock. We're just going to grab it all and then just going to export. And there we go. It makes me want to save again. So 
So let's jump back into ZBrush. Just going to jump into this tool because we don't really need to use this anymore. Going to import the fabric base. Press F to find it, to frame it in view. Okay, good, it's looking all right. So we're just going to auto group. Select the bully mesh, whoops. Then still holding control and shift, dragging down to invert selection. And now anything that we click on with control shift, We'll add it to that hidden uh, group. And we're just going to uh, invert the selection again. Well, we don't really need to do that. That's pointless. We can just split hidden. So we're going to, not that one. Yeah. We need to separate the meshes out. So we want this um, three-way section and the, the block here. So we can Boolean this, so we can split this. And what we're going to do is we're going to Z remesh. We're going to hide this so it's only isolate this so it's only visible. Geometry again, same process again. And then hit Z remesher. Nice, we've got some good topology here. Increase the segments. Just gonna polish it a little bit, just to smooth out those edges. And then subdivide. Because it's all it's one subtool. Um we're gonna just try and live boolean it straight away and see what happens. Make boolean mesh. Doesn't do anything. Try again. Nothing. So we're going to have to separate it. So we're just going to, because they've already got their own groups, we're just going to group split. And now I'll select this one. Oh no. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to merge them all back together. Because we've had some strange polygrouping issue here. So I'm just going to group visible. Then auto groups again. And split groups to see if it does actually cancel this. Make sure that's not on. Yeah, it's doing it again. Around here, we don't really want that because that's going to be a bit of an issue. I'm just back in um, Blender just to see if there's an issue here. No, there shouldn't be. I'm just going to merge them down again. What I'm going to do is, oh, there's an issue here. Yep. Why that has happened, I have no idea. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just export this part out on its own. Just going to make sure nothing has happened here. Apply all. Remove these edges. Just in case that overlap was causing an issue. I'm just going to export that separately as um, all grip three way base. I'm just going to delete this. Groups seems to be working fine now. Might as well work with it now. Um, in here, um, just polish it a little bit. And go back to this, and then append it back in. Actually. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep it separate for now. And we're just going to do the boolean stuff here. So um, we're going to split it, group split. And it's done it again. Wow. Uh -huh. So it is to do with this part of the mesh. There we go. To be honest, I don't know why it's doing that. So I'm just going to select all these polygons here, delete this, them, and then fill that in. I'm just going to keep groups off. <laughs> okay. Polish it a little bit. Let's hope this has fixed it. Yes, there we go. Whew. Sometimes you run into these issues and it's just best to take the time to look over the mesh. Just make sure you haven't made any mistakes. The mistake there was that I had some overlapping geometry that was causing some grouping issues when I was doing the Z remeshing. 
And it's something to note uh, when doing something like this again. Just going to move that up to the top. Live Boolean. And they're all good because they're going to uh, they're going to uh, be a union to this whole mesh and then make Boolean. There we go. And then what we need to do again is Z remesh. I'm going to group visible. There we go. It's looking a little low in resolution, so we're just going to smooth this out just a bit and then increase the res to about 2 million. That's fine. And now what we can do is just smooth this out. I'm just going to use the brush instead of using uh, polish. I mean, we can use polish, let's just see, but it does the whole entire mesh, which can cause some issues, and it doesn't always do the best of job. It's not, um, just to go in, maybe a lower subdivision level, and just go in and smooth it. Because if you look at our ref, it's quite a smooth transition between the two. Like we said it, it sort of joins into the center as well. So we're going to try and just smooth out just so it joins there as well. to a higher subdivision subdivision level and just that's perfect and we're going to leave that detail out this little diamond pattern because we can we can do that in substance painter just with an alpha mask okay so now that we've got that we're going to do the other booleans for this we could have done it all in one um but <laughs> from experience that can incur a lot of issues um, or I, I've incurred a lot of issues doing that. So we're just going to separate those two meshes there. And then, and this one, we're going to append it. And then we've got to do some work on these again. good so select like the target mesh delete the subdivision levels delete the subdivision levels for that as well so this is the target mesh live boolean is on so this will be affected by anything underneath that's visible i'm going to subtract okay it's looking good now we're just going to make boolean mesh There we go. Here it is. Group visible. So it's all one polygroup. And we've got to Z remesh it again. Just to get some nice proper uh, geometry going. 
So we're going to get, keep, keep, keep it the same. Keep creases and detect edges. Okay, so that's now that's done. We can go ahead and subdivide because it's only at 161,000. It's quite low for a high poly mesh. And then we're just going to polish it again. Smooth that out. Go down a subdivision level and just going to polish it again. Or we can just go in manually smoothing it with the smooth brush when you hold shift. Okay, that's looking good. So now we're going to delete these because we don't need them. And then we're just going to append. It's starting to look really nice. So now we need to do this. Split hidden. Just going to isolate it. Um, the reason why we uh, increase the adaptive size um, is because um, the the higher the adaptive size, uh, the more Z, -re Z remesher will take in the overall form of the uh, the mesh and um, create a better polygon flow um, on the mesh instead of being so rigid to the shape. And this is quite helpful for stuff like uh, cylinders, especially when we have like um, threads on there. It just creates a really nice um, uh, uh, poly flow um, and it becomes quite even, which is good for us. So we're just going to hit remesh. And you notice that we have come into a bit of an issue because if we increase the curve strength nope that doesn't do anything that's fine root visible oh. subdivide it and then polish oh what's happened there So now we need to Make sure these are hidden so it doesn't 
um, become affected in the boolean. Subtract. That's looking quite nice, that is. And then we're just going to make boolean mesh. If you to have everything visible, and then create boolean mesh, it would merge everything that's visible into one mesh, and that's not what we want. Okay, that's done. Increase the resolution. Turn off light boolean. And polish. Or we can just go in manually smoothing it out. And we can delete these now because we don't need them and hide everything and then append that back into and now we just need to um, split hidden Need to do the same here, just said remesh. Or do we? We don't really need to, to be honest, because, it, because in Blender, I mean, it's pretty straightforward that, that section there. There's nothing really to it at all. It's just quite dark. It looks like there's quite some tape on it, actually. So <laughs> we don't really need to mess with that. So I'm just going to clean up the scene. I delete this. Uh, I'm just going to delete that actually. And we may go as well, create some sculpting details here. Just plugging in my Wacom tablet. which is upside down. And let's try to kill it. So what we're going to do is we're going to Z remesh these. But first, I'm going to save this. Okay, so that's uh, said remeshed. It's quite, it's looking quite nice. Increase the subdivision levels a little bit. <laughs> I just want to go for subtle details, really. So see the markings there. It's a bit pixelated, but you can see some stuff. I don't know what's happened to that one. Looks burnt.
again you don't want to overdo it with the the details because um you want some of the texture to do some of the work as well and if there's a lot of detail in the normals it will come out really noisy and quite nasty so we want to have subtle details so that's why i'm smoothing them out every now and then i'm just going around the me mesh using the da uh, Damien standard brush just to create some some nicks in the metal oops brush Not too much. Just where we think the it will be used most often. I'm just going to do some detail on this as well. Damn standard, not the Damien standard. <laughs> okay, that's quite nice. I do some here as well. And as I said, I'm going to rotate this piece. So I'm just going to separate. I need to delete the subdivision levels. Oh, it was close. Just gonna unlock it and then just tilt it from the this part here. Just ever so slightly. Maybe a little bit to the side as well. This has some irregular offset. Okay, well that's the four grit sculpted. Um, we're ready to go on to the next phase and that will be in the next video.